So lights are a very essential part of the filmmaking craft, but I feel like they can be overlooked or underappreciated by a lot of novice filmmakers. It is so much more fun, at least in my opinion, to learn about lighting than it is to learn about cameras. So over the years, I've been collecting a lot of Godox lights. They're relatively inexpensive, and the newer ones can be controlled with an app. So recently I got sent this Godox ML100 by, and so I wanted to use it in combination with a pretty affordable camera that I feel like most people can get their hands on. So just for the sake of ethics, I was sent this light, but that's as far as the collaboration goes. No one gets to see this video before I release it, and I can say whatever I want. So my buddy Nate helped me film a few different scenes using this Godox ML100 by, and we shot all the scenes using a Panasonic G85, which right now is about a $300 camera in the used market. Um, really, that comes down to lack of sleep. That year, 2012, doing filmmaking and running. So for this first scene, I had Nate sit on a bed in one of my spare rooms and I placed the light outside the window. So I don't want to get too technical with this video, but there were three pretty cool features about this light that I used in all three of these scenes. So the first thing was this included mini Fresnel lens, which helps focus the light and it actually gives you an extra stop of output too, which is pretty cool. So the second feature about this light that I used was the bi-color feature. Now this light can go from a super warm color temperature all the way to a super cool daylight color temperature. So I kind of wanted to go for like a sunset, sunrise type of vibe. So I set the light to a very warm color temperature and just had it blasting from outside the window. Which brings me to the third feature that I love about this light and the thing that I love about all of my Godox lights is that it can be controlled with an app. These lights can be controlled via Bluetooth and they connect to the Godox app basically instantaneously and it's very easy to use. And since I was lighting from the outside on basically all of these shots, being able to control my light while I was far away from it was actually really, really handy. So I kind of went buck wild with my mini fog machine on the first scene. So I kind of wanted to use it again on this stairway shot. It's kind of weird to think of a fog machine as a lighting accessory, but it really does add an extra bit of ambience to your shot and it can really help break up the lighting particles. So for this third shot, I had Nate sit down in my downstairs kitchen, fogged it up, and once again, lit from the outside. I think that the light coming through these old blinds actually worked really well. I think that shot examples like this can really drive home just how much you can do with lighting. Sure, I could have added some bounce or fill or neg, but I really wanted to show what I could do with just one light and a fog machine. And again, all of this stuff was shot on a Panasonic G85. This ML100 by is very powerful and yet very small. It's actually what's lighting me right now. The thing that I'm liking about these Godox ML series lights is that the ML mount is actually starting to mature a bit and you can get a lot of different accessories and modifiers for these lights. And that brings me to the one biggest con about this light is that if you're someone who has a lot of Bowens mount accessories and you're hoping to use them in combination with this light, you won't really be able to. But that isn't the biggest deal because there is a pretty inexpensive adapter that you can buy that'll change this Godox mount into a standard Bowens mount so you can use all of your normal Bowens mount accessories. But other than that, this light is very small, it's very powerful, it's bi-color, you can control it with an app and throw it in a backpack. And something that I love is just being able to take my entire filmmaking kit and just shrink it down to as small as it can be, just so I don't have to be lugging around the biggest light stands and the biggest modifiers. I can kind of just be a lot more of a nimble filmmaker, which is something that I'm always trying to do. These type of lights, you don't have to go out and buy a really hefty C stand to hold them up. Right now, I have 
this Ulanzi light stand, which I really like. I actually have two of them and it's holding up this ML100 by on a boom arm really easily. I don't even need a sandbag. So that's I think one of the biggest benefits to lights like these is that they're powerful, but they're also really small. I'm actually running it off of one of my small rig V-mount batteries via USB-C. I'm getting about 50 watts of output right now. And that's just really cool that you can take this small little setup you don't have to plug it into wall power and you can get a lot of power out of it. So if you were traveling a lot for your work and you needed to bring a small but powerful lighting package, one of these Ulanzi light stands, the ML100 by, and even just a really cheap umbrella for diffusion could be a really powerful option. In the world of video lights, there is a lot of different options on the market. And regardless of which one you go with, I think that having a system where all of your lights are from the same brand, they take the same mount, and they can be controlled with an app, I think makes a lot of sense. These Godox lights, although I have had a few of them sent to me, I've bought a lot of them as well. I'm using two of my tube lights in the back just for a little bit of accent lights. I'm using my bulb light in a lamp over here just to provide a little bit of ambience. And then of course, I have my ML100 by with a little tiny dome diffuser as my key light. But anyways, thanks for sticking with me. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon. I can turn them all off individually. So I can turn that off, turn that off, turn my ambience off, and then turn my key off. Later.